Hello, welcome to part two of unit seven review differential equations for calculus. All right, let's get started. So we have this logistic equation here. And so we have a couple of parts. It says identify the values of both K and the carrying capacity. Well, we know that this is in the form of our equation. So our population is equal to L, which is our carrying capacity plus one or over one plus some constant. Let's let's try and draw a plus again. One plus constant times e to the k t e to the negative k t. So this is kind of the form that it's in. So let's see if we can work out what we need. So we need both k and the carrying capacity. Well, the carrying capacity is obviously just this number up top. This is our carrying capacity. We know this because L is a carrying capacity and it's perfectly set up for us right there. So our carrying capacity, let's write L is 2,400. Now the second part of A is a bit misleading because we have this negative KT here but we so we look at this and we might think it's 4.3 but we have to think about what this part really means in terms of this so with our exponent rules we know that e to the 4.3 is times e to the negative t is this thing right here is e to the negative t let's let's draw that a bit more clear e to the negative t is this thing e thing up there e to the 4.3 3 minus t these are the same thing so we could just call this some constant we could call this what this constant something like a e to the 4.3 and so this is so if we said a is this this is a then e to the something times negative t so times negative t that's not a minus t this k is actually 1 it's not 4.3 this k is actually 1 so k is 1. So that was a bit tricky. We have all of our information for part b, so we can just substitute numbers. So find p of 0. So we're going to, we want p of 0 is going to be equal to, and start substituting in numbers, so 2,400 over 1 plus e to the 4.3 minus 0. So we can just leave that. And now if you substitute this into your calculator, you get 32.12 people. So 30, 32.12. But we don't have 0.12 of a person. So if this was a free response question, you would say about 32 people. So actually, let's write people. People infected. And infected. 32 infected. Infected people at the time t equals 0. All right, now it is time for C. So this is A over here. This is B, C. Okay, so we want 500 total people. 
So we can say we want the number of people, which is the left hand side here, so 500. And we need to find the number of days t. So we could just say, I don't know why I wrote the four first, but 2400 over one plus e to the 4.3 minus t. And now you just algebraically solve for t. So we're going to multiply both sides by this one plus, we're going to multiply both sides by this, and then we're going to divide by 500. So I'm just going to do that over here. So that's going to be 24 over 5, just canceling these hundreds, is going to be equal to 1 plus e to the 4.3 minus c. 4.3 minus t. Take the, let's not do that, let's subtract 1 first. So 24 over 5 minus 1 is 19 over 5. 19 by 5 is equal to e to the 4.3 minus t. Take the natural log of both sides to get rid of the e. So we have ln 19 over 5 is equal to 4.3 minus t. And then you will move the t over and subtract the move the t over and then subtract the natural log, which means t is equal to 4.3 minus ln of 19 by 5, which is about three days, three days. It's, it's about 2.96 specifically, so if you want to do this algebra yourself and just practice typing it in, that is what it is. Here is another logistic equation because they are kind of weird, and so we probably need some practice with those. So it says write the differential equation. All right, let's look at the prompt here. We have stocking a lake with 500 bass, carrying capacity. So that's the clue. It's a logistic equation with 10,000 fish. All right, it is estimated that it has tripled on the first year. So we can write the differential equation. So we have to write the differential form. So this is part A. So we have dt dt. Because it's a population of fish, if you wanted to do df dt for fish, go right ahead. We have dp dt is equal to, let's see here, to find the value of k. So we can have k and p in there because this is a function of p so kp and then it's going to be the form of 1 minus t over the carrying capacity but we know the carrying capacity which is 10,000 fish 10,000 link some zeros and then we need to find the value of p, it looks like, or the find the value of k. So to do that, I'm just going to write down our form for whenever it is integrated. So p is equal to the carrying capacity of 10,000. 10,000 over 1 plus a some constant e b minus k t so now we can start doing some substitutions we know that t0 is 500 because it says it starts with 500 so i'm just going to write this over here 
key notch is equal to 500. 500. All right, and then we need to find A. So we can do some algebra here to find our A value. The constant term is very easy to find for both exponential and logarithmic functions when you have no time variable, because it's just an e to the zero at that point. So we have p equals zero is 500, so 500 is equal to 10,000 over 1 plus a. Because e to the 0 is just 1, so it's just a. And so then we can do some simple algebra to find out that a is 19. We could just reciprocate it and then subtract 1, doing some very simple algebra, which I assume most of you guys can do. Let's see. So now we have a. We can substitute this back into another equation. Now we have to find an equation where k doesn't cancel out. So we have to go look at the problem and see what else we have. So looking back at the problem, what do we have? The population of that. Yeah, let's try that again. The population tripled in the first year. All right, so 500 tripled is 1,500. So that's some key information there. We know that P of 1 is 1,500. So then we can go back and substitute in values again. And because t is not 0, we'll actually keep the k. So we have 1 plus, but now we know a, so we can substitute a in. So 19 e to the, and then because t is 1, we just say negative k. And similar algebra to last time, to the other slide, we can get that 20 by 3 is 1 plus 19 e to the negative k by just multiplying both sides by e to the, or multiplying both sides by this and dividing 10,000 divided by 1,500. And then, then we could subtract 1 from both sides, making 17 by 3. is equal to 19 e to the negative k, dividing by 19 and taking the natural log of both sides. We get k is about one point and did the approximately equal one point two oh nine eight. Four decimal points is probably a good enough amount. All right. When will the population reach eight thousand? This is a really easy problem because we've just solved for all of our information. We solved for a. We solved for k. So now we can just plug and chug. So when will the mass population e reach 8,000? Well, that's 8,000 is equal to 10,000. I think this problem wants me to get better at writing my zeros. But anyway, 
the 19 e to the 1.2098 times t. And again, we can do some algebra by multiplying both sides, dividing. And doing all of the other stuff, which I've said multiple times, we get t is equal to 3.579 years. All right, find the largest growth rate of the bass population. This is also a relatively easy one because we know that the time when it will be going the quickest is when it when the population is at 500,000 not 500,000 5,000 so I'll just kind of indicate that I'll just say 5,000 so when the population is 5,000, so equals t. And we want to find the largest growth rate. We want to find the actual rate. So it's not solve for some time with this form over here. But we want to find the dpdt. So we're going to write that dpdt. dpdt. But we have solved for k now, and we know what the population will be at that point. So k is 1.2098 times p, which is 5,000. That's the times. I'm going to do that. Times 5,000 times the quantity 1 minus not 1. 1 minus p, which is 5,000, over 10,000, 10,000. And so then, substitute that into your calculator. We get dp dt is about 3,025, just slightly under with 3,2400.59, but again, we round up because it's more than 0.5. And so let's write the units here. This is in bass per year. Bass per year. Because again, this is a rate. Okay, so we have two questions here, two separate questions, but they shouldn't take up too much work. So we have the solution curve of y equals y prime when it passes to that point. So we want to find the exact y equals some function of x curve here. So y prime is equal is the same thing as dy dx. So dy dx is equal to y. And then we can use our separation of variables here. We can multiply both sides by dx and divide both sides by y. So dy over y is equal to dx. And then we can integrate both sides, boom, boom. So this is going to be ln, the absolute value of y, just by log rules, and this is just going to be x plus c. Can't forget our plus c's. Now we can exponentiate both sides. So e to the power, e to the power, e and ln cancel here, so you're left with y is equal to e to the x 
plus c. But we know that it passes to the point 2, 4. So 4 is y e to the 2 plus c. And we can rewrite this if we really wanted to. So I'm going to actually rewrite the upper one over here, saying that this is just some constant. We've already used c, so I'll just use a e to the x. And so instead of solving for c, we're going to solve for a. And then what we can do is we're going to do this in this exact same form here. This is still equal to y, so we don't even need this like thing over here. So instead, we're going to solve for a and just solve for the coefficient of e to the x. So we're going to, again, so this is equal to 4. And we're going to have a e squared. And to solve for a, we can sub divide both sides by e squared. So 4 over e squared, which is also equal to 4 e to the minus 2 is equal to our constant over here, a. And so we can rewrite this in our fancy notation as y is equal to 4 e to the minus 2 times e to the x. And that should be pretty much it for this problem. On a multiple choice, it might combine these exponents. So if you had a question similar to this, and it was with the answer choice e to the x minus 2, this is the same thing because we're just combining these. So these are both valid answers. All right, solve the equation. g prime of x is equal to 4, negative 4g of x. So let's, let's start with that. So g prime of x is just dg dt, I guess. So d g dx. So let's move these to the right hand side. So negative 4 dx. So we're going to now then divide both sides by g of x. g of x. So now we got our g terms and our x terms on the right hand side. So we can integrate. So now we have negative 4x is equal to the natural log of g of x. I'm just gonna write g. And then we can write then we can then we can exponentiate both sides. Got forgot my plus c. Do not forget your plus c. And so e and ln cancel. So this is g of x. G of x over here is equal to e to the negative 4x plus c. This is very similar to the problem on the left here. We have g of 2 is equal to 1. So g of 2. So 1 is equal to e to the negative 4 plus c. negative 4 times 2 
There we go. And so, basically doing the exact same thing we did before, we can find that C is equal to 8. And then I will write it with the exponent. So we're going to have g of x is equal to e to the negative 4x plus 8. This problem, I think, is relatively similar to the other ones, but it's a multiple choice, and so I'll kind of demonstrate the process of elimination if need be. So we have dy is equal to e to the y. So let's do some separation of variables here. We have dy over e to the y is equal to dx. And then we can integrate both sides. We're going to get x plus c. And then what is this left hand side? We can rewrite uh, e to the y over, or basically one, 1 over e to the y as e to the negative y. So when you integrate it, it's just going to be, it's just going to be equal to the negative e to the negative y. So when y is zero, well, that doesn't really matter too much because now e to the zero is one. So this is just not e, this is just negative one. So now we have negative one is equal to x plus c and x is equal to one. So we can just replace this x with one. And now we can do some algebra one and say that subtract one from both sides, c is equal to negative two. And we have our equation with their y in it. So e to the negative y, which is actually a negative e to the negative y, is equal to uh, x minus 2. Now you see this answer d is very similar. And if we multiply the entire thing by negative 1, we get e to the negative y is equal to 2 minus x, just switching these. And so the answer to this question is d. And now for slope fields, you thought you got away from them? That's funny. All right. Let us go. So let's look for some of these that we can easily determine. So, for example, this bottom one right here. We have dy dx is equal to x minus y. So, what would x minus y look like? Well, if x and y are the same, the slope is 0. So, so along a line, y equals x. So, let's like pick a generic graph. That's, the slope should be 0 along that line. And there's only one graph that demonstrates that one. Along this graph, this y equals x line, is a, the slope is about 0. It seems to be going through about right here. So this one is this graph, the graph VII, v, or VI. So just pay attention to when things are zeros. So like this one, we have a square root. And so we know that if we just said this to be zero, right? The zero is equal to this square root. We squared both sides, said x 
plus 3 and solve for x, x is negative 3. So anything less than negative 3 is going to be gone. It's not going to be relevant. And you could do this similar properties for natural log. And so we know that this one, where there's nothing in the real number line beforehand, is 5. So this one is 5. Or V. I don't know why I'm working backwards, but I can. Let's continue working backwards. I'll do this one in blue. So, negative x, y. So, when either x and y are 0, the slope is 0. So, we can look for some of that. So, here, the slope is 0 when x is 0. And when y is 0, the slope is 0. And there does not appear to be any other graph that does that. So we know that this one is 1. So I'll just cross off the ones we've already done. All right. Then we could probably do the sine squared one relatively easily. We know that sine is some cyclical function, and you can kind of see the little sine waves here. And again, you could just, if you wanted to, you could start substituting in values and say, oh, when will sine x be 0? That's at 0. And so over here, when x is 0, it's 0. And this looks probably about pi, which is when sine is also 0, and negative pi. So this one is 4. No, not that one. This one is 4. Alright. Then let's do, I guess, 1 plus y squared. So we know that it's always going to be a positive slope. Because y squaring a real number will always lead to a real answer. So both of these that are left, 2 and 3, have only positive answers, so that does not help us here. But we can also see that this second one is drastically increasing, like, it's going extremely quickly, and it's never quite 0, I think, because e to the x never is 0. So, it may be really close to zero, and it gets infinitely closer to zero as we go this way, but it's never actually zero. And so we can tell that this one is two by that, and by process of elimination, this is three. But we're going to look at this and say, because this is squared, you know you're going to have some kind of increasing function. But here we also notice we have this plus 1, which means the slope at the origin, for example, will be 1. And it will always be greater than 1. And here, and the other ones, it's there can be some, here's some negative slopes, so that's obviously not right. Here's some negative slopes. That one's not right, obviously. So this one is 3. Because it's ne it has to have a slope of 1 or greater. Because, again, y squared can never be negative. So now we have a whole non-calculator proper free response question. So let's go and do this. Consider the differential equation dy dx is equal to 2 plus 3x squared over y. So we're going to sketch the slope field over here. So every little box is supposed to meant to represent one thing. So let's imagine when y is equal to 0. When y is equal to 0, the slope is going to be undefined. So we can do little 
vertical lines here to indicate that the slope is going to be undefined at those points. So we have already gotten a quarter of them done. Next, we're going to say, what about when, I guess, let's just go up the x-axis. So y is now 1 and x is 0. So, that, so now that's 2 over 1. And here it's going to be 2 over 2, because y is now 2. And then we can look over here at the bottom side, so y is negative 1. And so that would be 2 over negative 1, or negative 2. And negative 2 over 2 for the bottom one. And so now we just have these four and we're here, or the four corners. So let's look at what will probably be the easiest, I guess. Maybe even do some kind of table of some sort, perhaps. But I'm just going to go ahead and try each of these things. I'll, I'll do one corner, I'll do the positive corner, and you guys can go ahead and do the rest. So we have 2 plus 3x squared. Let's do 1, 1. So 2 plus 3 is 5 over 1. So this is going to be a relatively steep slope here. And then over here x is 2 and y is 1. So at x equals 2, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2. That's even steeper. And then, let's see, now y is 2. So and x is 1, so that's 5 over 2. So, and, let's see, 12 plus 2 over 2. So, the general shape of this thing is this curved. That's not exactly how I drew it, but that's kind of the point, is this kind of sideways U type of thing. But let's go on to part B. It says, let f be the function that satisfies the differential equation. Um, and we need to write a tangent line. It's supposed to say write a tangent line there. So let us find 1, 2. So at the point 1 over 2 up, that is this point right here. And so we're probably going to have to even sketch a thing. So I will go ahead and do that. I'll just sketch a little... And then it's going to go... Whoa. That is a horrible curve. But whatever. So let's create this tangent line. So the tangent line is going to be in the form of y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This is just our slope form rewritten, which our slope is just y is change in y minus change in x. So, so y minus y1 times x minus x1. So if you multiply both sides by this bottom part, you get, you get this slope form thing. So if anyone doesn't remember this exact formula, don't worry, because it's just slope. It's, it's just a rewritten slope. 
So we have our y, and we have our y1, which is 2. So y minus 2 is equal to m. So we need to find our slope at this point. And, and a good thing we have our equation for our slope up here. So 2 plus one, 3 times 1 squared, which is just 3, over our y, which is 2, is 5 by 2. So m is 5 by 2. 5 by 2. And then we're going to multiply this by x minus x1, which is 1. And so this is, you could literally leave this blank, or leave this like this, and it works perfectly fine. But to help with the next problem, I will move the 2 to the other side. So y, so this is part b, b, and now for part c, we need to estimate one f of 1.1. So f of 1.1, so this is just y when x is equal to 1.1. So I'm going to say 5 by 2 times 1.1 minus 1 minus, or no, plus 2, because we're adding 2 to the other side. So this 1.1 minus 1 is just 0 0.1. So 0 0.1. So 5 by 2, which is 2. So this is 2.5 times 0 0.1. 2.5 times 0 0.1, which is just... Uh, you can literally leave it like this. I don't I don't know why I'm trying to simplify it. You can leave it as 2.5. You could literally leave it as this and box your answer. But I'm going to do the math anyway. So move the decimal point. So that's 0 0.25. 2, 5, plus 2. And f of 1.1 1 .1 is about 2.25. All right, question D. Let's do it over here. Question D says, find the particular solution with the initial condition f of one is equal to two. All right, so now we have to actually integrate. So let's actually figure it out. So let's do separation of the variables here. We have y dy is equal to 2 plus 3x squared dx. And then you use your power rule. When you integrate both sides, so that's what I'm doing here, integrate. Oh, integrate, integrate. And so our power rule says add, so this is y to the first. So you add 1 to the exponent and divide by that exponent. So now you have y squared by 2 is equal to 2x. Uh, plus so your x cubed and then let's see plus c Cleaned up the board a little bit, but we need to solve for c now. So we have our initial condition of f of 1 is equal to 2. So 
2 is our y, so that's 4 by 2 is equal to 1 times 2 plus 1 cubed, which is 1 plus c. So this is 2 is equal to 3 plus c. So that c is equal to negative 1. c is equal to negative 1. And now we can go back over here to this y squared, multiply by 2, and take the square root. So we have y is equal to the square root of, and I'm just going to distribute this 2 over here. I'm not, I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to write this. 2x plus x cubed. And then plus c, which is minus 1. And technically, x has to be greater than 0. That should be it. So now we will do part E. Let's see, is it an overestimate or an underestimate? So we know that if a if we have a general function and it's something like this, and we have a derivative. And we know it's point at like f of 1, right? Let's say this is 1. And we know it's a derivative and it's concave up. Then we know that over here, if we just kind of estimate using that tangent, I'll do the tangent in a different color. If we estimate using that tangent at 1.1 over here, it's going to be an underestimate. Let's say it's like right here. Oh, let's do a straight line. This is an underestimate. This is where we predict it will be, but this is where it actually is. So that's when it's an underestimate, when it's concave up. And when it's concave down, it's going to be an overestimate. And we know that square root functions are concave down when the function is positive, and this is a positive square root. So this is actually concave down, so it is an overestimate. Over, so this is part E over estimate. Because we know it's a positive square root because we have this side of the function here. If it was, if we had a negative one, two, then we would have the negative square root. But we know here it's an overestimate because it is concave down. It is shaped similar to this, some kind of square root function. We know what square root functions look like. So we know it's going to be concave down. And, and so we can say this is an overestimate because it is concave down the tangent line will lie above this curve. Kind of what we showed over here with the underestimate, but it's the exact opposite. It will, the tangent line lies above the curve. f of, f prime of x is increasing, it is concave down. All of those should be a valid explanation for why this is an overestimate.